So, good morning, everybody. How are you? So, um, we want to speak a little bit, as it was introduced, about uh, the document foundation. But to be honest, um, we want to speak not so much about how do they work, how do we work. We want to uh, speak more about how you could be involved, how can we get your contribution to this awesome project. And uh, frankly, let me want to um, introduce some areas, some local specific uh, specifics of the Asian uh, community and perhaps of other uh, local communities, how they work and what's the fun behind to be in the project uh, with uh, TDF. So it's not so much about persons, you know me already, I think. Okay, okay. okay. Um, thank you again for being here as participants, as organizers, as hosts. Um, it's uh, very appreciated uh, to kind of address you with this um, kind of talk. So I already um, shown this um, history of uh, <coughs> LibreOffice, of the project of LibreOffice and um, TDF itself uh, was needed after um, branding LibreOffice in 2010, uh, 2010 um, branding LibreOffice as the, with a new name um, to have an organization behind this project who covers some juristical <coughs> items uh, or issues like um, having the, the brand being the owner of the brand LibreOffice and uh, such things. So um, there was a need to have an uh, independent organization after a lot of experience out of um, other forms of organizations, we decided to have an organization like a foundation, as many other open source projects do. I think you know also Mozilla or other uh, foundation kinds of foundations. So, some people have a lot of, done a lot of work in 2010 um, to search for, for an organization, kind of organization, to be independent and transparent with the project. And um, we found uh, this kind of uh, foundation in Germany. Uh, it's called uh, Foundation by German Law because uh, this, this law for foundations in Germany is very, very strict. So uh, we, we say foundations in Germany are for eternity. They are staying forever because nearly nobody is able to change uh, things in this foundation because once it is formed, it's staying like this uh, forever. So this was the reason uh, in 2010 to form the foundation, um, the document foundation. What is the, uh, the, the purpose? Why did we, I, I said, promote free software, promote users' freedom, to give uh, digital sovereignty to them, to, to, to promote an open standard document format not just a half uh, open format or something like this, a full open uh, document standard with uh, its uh, software LibreOffice. And uh, last but not least, certainly to develop, to organize the uh, processes behind uh, the, the project, behind the software itself. It's not just, and I promise I will show you uh, some other areas, it's not just about developing it's not just to be involved if you are a programmer. There are so many other areas where you can contribute your know-how, your efforts to the project, which is very, very, very appreciated uh, to bring into to the Document Foundation. So, the important thing here is perhaps uh, there's another um, uh, website um, uh, with uh, www.documentfoundation.org. You can find all uh, information on formal information, on informal information about the foundation itself, about the, the governance of the foundation, 
and uh, so on. So if you are interested in the body, in the organization itself, please have a look at this uh, website and uh, um, take a second to, to read uh, all the stuff which is uh, behind there. <coughs> Just a glimpse, I don't want to explain it very hard as you can imagine as German foundation there is a huge uh, formalism left and right and as former chairman I can say you it's hard work to, to uh, have this running. So mainly there are three bodies in uh, the document foundation. It's the membership itself. So if you applicate to the foundation, you're doing a membership application and I will explain how to uh, applicate membership. And out of this membership, uh, it's called Board of Trustees, um, there are elections for two other bodies. It's the uh, membership committee who decides about the applications, about the membership applications. And the other one is the board of directors who are um, like in a company, the, the decision making um, body. So both, both are elected out of the membership. So if you want to help in the board or if you want to uh, have to uh, work in the membership committee, first you have to be a member of the foundation. <laughs> so, but it not begins um, at the point to be a member. It begins, and this is a prerequisite to be a member, with your um, contribution in the project. So we call it a duocracy. So everybody who does something to help the project, to help the software, to help the foundation is welcomed and is, uh, is be uh, credited for it. And um, we want to have your um, contributions in the project um, and uh, let me let me say perhaps something about this uh, comic. So yesterday we, we discussed a little bit about uh, not about uh, what and um, how can I applicate to a member. We discuss about why. Why should somebody out of the audience, out of you? be involved or should be motivated to come into um, the, uh, the community. So we often hear, uh, hear the words, the world is so big and I am so small, my knowledge is so small and so on. How could possibly contribute anything that matters? I will tell you uh, what this could be and uh, where are some areas, but it's all about this little flower over there getting this little flower as motivation for you. And let me say a few sentences what could be a motivation. It's not just to learn uh, to dealing with software. It's not just developing, uh, getting development skills. It's so much more. For example, uh, yesterday we had a great talk from a boy here on stage uh, I don't know exactly his age, but he, is, he was very young and I think such examples are the very most or best example what it is about. I think it was uh, for him and for us an experience, a lifetime, once a lifetime experience to stay on stage to address an audience with his age in English uh, which is very, very, very appreciated. So other things could be, um, as Franklin will speak after, uh, after a few minutes, um, we work together now since eight years, seven years. Seven, uh, yeah, yeah seven, nearly eight, ten years. Nearly, nearly, ten nearly years. seven, eight years. You will, in a worldwide project, you will get friends, colleagues, friends, um, all over the world. And I can really, really tell you that it is an experience 
even to come to Indonesia, the first time in my life to be in Indonesia, to experience, uh, to work with other peoples, to cherish uh, the diversity in the project. So this might be motivations to have a look in all the areas uh, where we can uh, need help, where you can contribute. And again, uh, it's not just easy hacks, it's not just development. Certainly you are very, very appreciated if you are a developer, if you can uh, do easy hacks in the software itself, then there's a lot of information you can see here on a website how you can uh, be involved as a developer. But also, um, we have so many other areas, for example, quality assurance, testing, user, testing user environments. You are really welcomed if you find some bugs in the UI or in the functionality and report it so that our other developers able to fix this. So this could be one area. There could be one area for localization, for, for, um, uh, for having uh, the, the UI um, localized, uh, for example, in Indonesian uh, language or in other languages. We nearly have 140 languages, different UI languages, which is per se, uh, Itadol said always, the most translated uh, yes. software of, of the world. So you can be part of this. Documentation. You see at the LibreOffice uh, booth, there, is, uh, there are some books. They have to be uh, done, they have to be written, they have to be designed and, and, and so on. Design and user experience. I know that Indonesians are very, very, very good in design. This is an area where we need your help. There are a lot of tasks uh, which should be done. Get in contact with the design and uh, user experience team. Um, they will give you a hand and integrate you in the project. Website team, accessibility team, marketing team, uh, doing all the marketing stuff uh, you see around uh, LibreOffice and so on. So have a look, uh, uh, there's also a second project beside um, the, the uh, pure LibreOffice software. It's mentioned document liberation project. It's um, a very special project for having filters, document format filters for uh, a different set of uh, document formats. So, and it works it like follows. If you have done contributions, lasting a few months, if you have showed that you are uh, willing to contribute uh, next time, next six, six months time, then you can apply for mem membership in Document Foundation and the membership committee I mentioned will have a look what have you have done, what, uh, in which area are you active and then they will grant you the membership of Document Foundation um, and then you are a member of the foundation. So, Franklin, what about the Asian community, the Asian members of the foundation? Happy to hear about this. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, okay. Well, this is me. The photo is not me. The photo is my younger son. Okay. So, I'm Franklin. I'm from Taiwan, and I have already involved in in open source, free and open source. I have involved in free software and open source software for about thirty years. Uh, I, I'm now certified migration consultant and tra professional trainer of LibreOffice. And I used to be the former member in the board of directory. But before my part, I would like to elaborate a bit from what just Lothar said. All this, it is what PDF now has. But what I'm talking about now is what you can do. 
For example, this one easy task is if you know how to program, how to develop. If you are familiar with C++ or Python programming language, you can try to fix the problems in LibreOffice and start from the easy hacks. That's what you can do. But if you don't know how to write program, that's fine. We have a lot of things you can do. Like this, what is QA? QA means if you find a problem in LibreOffice, if you find a bug, if you think this behavior is strange, you can report it to the system. You can report this problem to this system. So that developers has a chance to take a look and fix them. You have to know that you report this system, this problem, and the developer fix the problem. That means you benefit all the users in the world. Okay? So even you just report one problem and that is fixed, you have great contribution in the office. And the, another one is that in the QA system, you can try to see what, has, what is the current problem in the office. They have, there are many, many bugs, many, many reports in the system, and you can try those, those bugs if they are still easy in the newest version of LibreOffice. If they already solved, you can mark, oh, okay, this bug is solved in, the, in this version, and that is also a great contribution. Okay? So this is very simple thing you can do, and you have great contribution. Localization means you can translate LibreOffice into Indonesia, or in, even into Japanese, yes, that's possible, really. That's possible. So that more users, more local users here can use LibreOffice without problem. Right, not every user can read English, but if you can translate it into Indonesia, more users in Indonesia can use this software. So just, Lothar just said that the LibreOffice is the more, uh, LibreOffice has the most language support in the whole world. You never find a software that has so many language support. More than 160, maybe probably more languages. So that is what you can do. Right? Documentation is uh, it's just said that in the books behind, the, there are books. Yeah, there, there are books that, and those books are written by the documentation team. Yeah, that's good. And you can try to help them. Besides, if you know how to design icons, you can, uh, besides the user experience, actually what you can do is design good icons or good uh, slides template. Okay, and uh, you can contribute to our center. So that is what you can do. Marketing means you can hold small or big event like this, or small event, just a few friends, that's fine. Even you just teach some of your friends to use LibreOffice, that is a great contribution. Okay, so, to apply TDF membership means as long as you have contribution and it's a steady contribution means you keep doing these things. You keep doing these things. Not just all oh, one do, do this one and after a year do another one. Uh, probably okay, but if you want to apply as a membership of TDF, you can do just regularly hold the event, regularly report the bugs, fix the problems, translation. That's all what you can do. And becoming a TDF member, 
You at least have the chance to attend Liber of Conference in Europe. Okay? Right? Okay, now my part. My part is about uh, this time in September, last, year, last month, when I was in Europe attending the Labor of Conference this year, uh, some, some community friends and I were talking about, uh, yes, we have conference every year in Europe. That's international Libov conference. At the same time, we have conference in Latin America. That's Middle and South America. Uh, in Asia, we have Libov Indonesia in 2018. That's the first time. Also, I, I attended that, that that time this that time and. Uh, in 19, 2019, the Liberal Asia is in Japan. But originally, I want to hold the Liberal of Asia in Taiwan in 2020, but then the pandemic hit, we canceled all the activities. And until this year, we start Liberal of Asia again here. So this year in Europe, in Romania, some friends and I talk about, of course, yes, in Europe is in the middle of Latin America and Asia. But of course, we don't need to always meet in Europe. We can have some direct connection. And I agree with that. So this November, next month, I will also fly to Mexico to attend the Latin America Liberal Office Conference. My main mission is to introduce Asia community to Latin America. So now, I will introduce Latin America community to you. And uh, of course, this means, for example, like this one, Mauricio, I don't know how to pronounce most of the names, so, so just, just as is. Like, like he, he, uh, He's expert in Python extension. That means if you are doing this, you are writing an extension in Python, you are writing a macro in Python, in LibreOffice, feel free to contact with him to ask if you have any problem. Okay? He's an expert of this part. Elaine, Elaine is from Brazil, and uh, marketing, social media, that's it. You see, if you are good in social media, you can have contribution to live office. That's what you can do, right? That's also a part of marketing. Okay, so she's doing this, and you can do that. And you can contact with her, share your information. Like this, Jose. Jose is definitely a developer. Okay, uh, he's from Chile. Uh, speak in Spanish, that is Timothy. Documentation, he's a, a member of documentation team and from Brazil. Daniel, Daniel is uh, a former board member We uh, Lothar and uh, we are in the same board uh, last term. He's in Argentina and uh, he's also good at marketing and he works in the university. Gustavo, Gustavo is a member of the membership committee. So he's from Brazil. Actually, he is the one we are talking about this idea to connect Latin America and Asia together. Olivia, Olivia is the leader of the documentation team. You can see the level of help is pretty complete. So mostly of his lead. They have a documentation team and he's the leader. He's from Brazil. Henderson, also a documentation team from Brazil. Juan, also documentation team, but you see, he's from Spain. Spain is in Europe, not in Latin America. 
but he's still a member of Latin America community. You see, you don't need to really need to live there to be a community member of them. They, of course, they all speak Spanish, so they all attend the Latin America conference every year. That's that's sent to you, right? You don't need to live in somewhere to be a community member. Lima, Lima is also development team from Brazil. Celina, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Translation, okay, translation. He's from Mexico, she's from Mexico. So if you can translate from English to Indonesia, just do it, okay? Jackson is documentation team from Brazil. You can see uh, many documentation team are in Brazil. That's because Olivia is in, from Brazil. Henry Castro, development. So if you are interested in writing program in develop uh, or debug LibreOffice, actually for you, because most of you are pretty young, so maybe you are still learning how to program, how to write programs. LibreOffice is open source, so that's what you can study. And the, all the developers there are happy to help you if you have any problem. It's not easy. It's not easy to check. It's not easy, but always they are happy to help you. So he is, you can contact with him from Bolivia, okay? Cisco, Cisco is uh, the TDF QA team. The QA is, I just say, if you have, you found a bug, you can report the bug to the system and the Cisco is responsible for the system, okay? And he's, he will help you to try to make it clear, something like that. And you can find that he is also from Spain. Yeah, he's also from Spain. Hey? Hello, we meet again, okay? Okay, so that's the Latin America community. So right now, I will show you what I will show to Latin America. Of, of course, all these members I will show, I'm showing is, uh, there are members that I'm more familiar with. So let's go through this again. Harris, where's Harris? Oh, Harris is there. Mr. Bar, he? Harris is also a membership committee member. Yeah. Ronia. Ah, here. Yeah. What? Ah. Okay. Nuguruho? Yeah, where, where, where? Where the girl should be here? Ah, oh, there. Okay, in the in the back. Jordan is he here? Ah, oh, there. Ah, enough. Is Cuckoo here? No. Okay. They made a great Libre Office release video together, and that impressed the international community really. Shinji is from Japan, and uh, I can tell you, he really hold a lot of events, a lot, maybe nearly 100 a year, online or physical, to study LibreOffice together, translate, or uh, anyway, he, uh, really a lot. Because I joined the mailing list, so I will receive a lot of Mayors from them. Naruhiko, here. Naruhiko, Japanese member. Daehyung is not here. He's from Korea and he is a developer. They many, many work on CJK. CJK means Chinese, Japanese, Korean, 
That's a special language issues. Uh, the following is all from Taiwan, so they are not here. I just go through. Eric is yeah. Eric came came here several times. Yeah, he is uh he is a very good trainer, and uh, we we are partner to promote ODF policy in Taiwan. Jeff is Jeff is pretty young. He's maybe 24, 25, but he attend many many open source communities in Taiwan. Not only LibreOffice, but also uh, OpenStreetMap, Wiki, and uh, some something like Debian, I've got anyway. He really attended many, many, uh, Mozilla, many, many open source communities. And he mainly do translation, promote, marketing, holding events, yeah. Mark is a developer and he has a great contribution to CJK issues. Really great. So, if you, you are not here, you are not in the list, so we are waiting for you, okay? Join us and let me introduce you to Latin America, okay? So, that's our talk, waiting for you. And do you have any questions you want to ask? If no, thank you very much.